The cowboy code is a common group of ethics. Whether it's a firm handshake, looking somebody in the eye, living with integrity, living with honesty, the callous hand of a hard day's work, to me, that's what it takes to be the cowboy code. So today I'm rolling into Jacksonville, Alabama, and I'm really excited about today. I'm getting to meet country music superstar, Riley Green. We're gonna tour his farm. We're gonna talk about cowboy stuff. We're gonna talk about country boy stuff. We're gonna have a heck of a good time. Hey, hey, there he is. How we doing, Hi, my man? Green. Tyson Durfee, nice to meet yeah, you, sir. Glad you're here. I'm excited to be here. I have never been here before. I think it's a place I can fall in love with. Well, I'm. Uh, <laughs> it's one of my favorite places to be in the world, and uh, I'm glad you're here, and I got a lot of stuff that I'd like to ride around and show you. All right, I hear we got some work to do, right? Yeah, it's uh, hunting season has is, is got on us now, and I'm gonna try to get you to help me get some of these food plots ready and maybe trim some lanes for yes, uh, hunting season coming up, if you don't mind. Let's go do it. Perfect. Are you driving or am I driving? Well, I guess, I mean, I gotta show you the form, don't I? I guess, but yeah. I sure like I'll let you drive on the way back. All right, that? that'll work, that'll work. Well, it's, it's, it's funny, you know, especially getting to go travel and hunt some big ranches and stuff, is that an acre of land is different everywhere. Oh, you, you know what I mean? Like, it? 600 acres here is a bunch of land. It's a lot. But it's not in Nebraska. Yeah. There's a lot of water right here in this part of the state. I it's see surrounded by a lot of big map. lakes. I, I, Man, talk about pretty, huh? Yeah, man, I love this creek down here. This natural spring stays full year round. Looks like a good minnow catching place. There's probably some in here. What do we got going on over there? So this is a cave that when I was a kid, you can see some of the little remnants of a fort. We used to come down here and spend the night in this old cave. I yeah. guess we wasn't worried about snakes back then. Realize what you have here is something that very few people on earth get. Yeah, you know. you know what I'm reminded of? It's when I go to Nashville and start looking at property. Yeah. I don't think you can find 600 acres within an hour of town up there. $20 million. Uh, I don't want to cut all this, man. I, I like it. So I want it to look the way it is when I'm trying to buy as much as I can, you know? You know, I could only imagine what it was like growing up around here. You know, something like Jacksonville, this farm, history, heritage. You know, what, what was it like growing up here? It was a lot like this right here. Quiet, you know, things seemed to move a little bit slower right here in this community, and Jackson will help me in my career. You know, whether it was the accountability I learned as an 18-year-old kid going to play college football up here, you know, and having to get to class and get to 5.30 workouts. And, you know, a lot of the community kind of rallied around me when I first started my career, started writing songs and playing in every little honky-tonk bar there was. So I owe a lot to this area, and so I try to give back any way I can, and I hope that maybe there's some kids that come up and pick a guitar up after me that get to do what I do for a living. Talk about a view, man. No, man, this is one of my favorite spots on the Ooh. farm right here. You can kind of get a get an idea for how the whole farm lays from right here. I'm actually get, I'm getting goosebumps right now because, I mean, this is what makes a life worth living. I had no idea there was mountains up here because I hadn't been to North Alabama before. I, I had no idea. Where my barn sits down there and where the lake yeah. you can see now is what we always grew up calling the rabbit farm. It belonged to my great uncle Bill. My granddaddy Buford called it the rabbit farm because he said the dirt wasn't good for growing anything except for rabbits, so that's what we <laughs> call it now. But it's uh, it's just right down here. And the crazy thing is this property was just all wooded, and when I cleared it off, I had no idea this view was even up here. Well, and it's like you're unlocking greatness by doing dirty work. You know, as a cowboy, I want to get in and get my hands dirty and do some stuff. I don't want to just point and say, do this, do this. I like to actually get in and, and get it done. And, you know, I see that lake you're building that's going to get even bigger, which is going to even make this view more magnificent someday. Well, I was really fortunate to get to grow up running around on this property. And so I'm always really motivated to come down here and work on the farm and make it a better place. But at the same time, it's just such a great place for me to come and disconnect from being on the road. You know, there's not many times that I'm worried about the charts when I'm on a tractor or when I'm riding around on a Polaris on the farm, that's kind of my getaway, and it's something that I think is really important, not only for a distraction from the crazy reality of the country music world, but also, you know, a way for me to get back to my roots, and, you know, that's ultimately where I write songs from. Yeah, no, this is, this is amazing. So I'd like to get horseback out here on this place. Well, we'll get some horses out here. <laughs> Find a good place for a horse barn, and we'll get that done. That's I've awesome. got some more places on the property I want to show you, a couple that really tie into my family and, and kind of tell the story of how I got into country music, so. You want to go check them out? Outstanding. Let's roll. Let's do it. Let's 
So I see all these saw blades around here. So this was my great grandparents' house and we turned it into a music hall, sort of a miniature Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> cool. And uh, you know, we have a sawmill back up here in the back. So my granddaddy Buford decided he wanted to call it the golden saw. I painted a saw blade gold, hung it up, and we started having music here every Friday night. And it's been kind of where I got my start playing music at. Wow. Pretty cool place, eh? This is the first place that you got on a stage. Yeah, this was uh, kind of, I guess, where I got my start. My granddaddy Buford kind of started this on the porch with me. We'd sit around and play old country songs, and people started coming to watch, and we added all this on. And my granddaddy used to hand me a $10 bill every once in a while if I'd get up and sing a song. So I was trying to get that allowance money <laughs> yeah. if I could. And I just kind of sat around and watched how they made chords and figured out how to play a bunch of old George Jones and Real Haggard songs, you know? Everybody was welcome. It kept, a, this place kept a lot of folks alive, I think. What is the moment in your career where you decided that this is a real thing? I can do this and make a living and build a life that I want. When was that moment for you? We have a place down the road called the Back 40 where we built a stage and we called it the Back 40 Bash. And uh, I'd love to take you over there and show you that place too. But it was where that moment really happened. And I thought, man, people really like my songs and they, they're showing up to hear me play. And that maybe there was a career in this after all. So this is the legendary Back 40, huh? This is the, the location of the Back 40 Bash. This was the ticket booth. My mom would take up tickets on one end and Pops took up tickets on the other and we parked cars out here. I can remember parking cars myself before I played the show on the stage that night. Wow. Really just the idea we had thinking we might could get a couple hundred folks to show up. And I think the very first one we had 1,400 and there was just people everywhere and <laughs> bringing coolers and you know having a good time. But it was, uh, we weren't ready for what it turned into. And that's, you know, you were doing something to try to serve and help folks and do something unique and the, and the community really got behind it's it. It's funny to think that this is kind of the moment that I realized I might have a future in country music, you know, because, you know, for a couple thousand people to show up in a field in the middle of nowhere, oh, and Jackson, Alabama was a big deal for me and gradually got bigger and bigger. And we always came back to it. And every year we say, we're not doing that again. It's too crazy, too you know, and then we do it again. But if you do it again, will you headline for sure? I'd kind of like to hang out out here, you know? <laughs> Maybe put a wig on me and you can hide yeah, back in the back yeah. and just watch the show. That'd be fun. I'd love Hey, man, I'm here. You call yeah. me, I'll, I'll drive straight over from Texas. Let's do it. Well, speaking of having you here, we've had the tour now. we got some work we got to do today. Let's get it done. All right, let's go. You know, one of the things that unites the country boy and the cowboy is the callous hand. For me, the cowboy code is about eating, sleeping, breathing, ethics that every small town in America is made of. And I can honestly tell you the Green family is the epitome of that. <laughs>